I want to pay homage to one of the most disgusting, vile, corrupt, evil politicians, possibly in United Corporations of America history. You have any guesses who I'm talking about? This politician is now leaving office. So I would like to pay homage to his disgraceful legacy, to his disgraceful treatment of the downtrodden, to his disgraceful indifference to suffering. Rick Snyder. But Rick Snyder deserves all that I am about to give him. Because Rick Snyder, in my view, I, 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 I hope you're not related, Laura Snyder, for your sake. <laughs> I'm going to show you a clip to, to start this off. To begin, I'd like to address the people of Flint. Your families face a crisis, a crisis you did not create and could not have prevented. I want to speak directly, honestly, and sincerely to let you know we are praying for you, we are working hard for you, and we are absolutely committed to taking the right steps to effectively solve this crisis. To you, the people of Flint, I say tonight, as I have before, I am sorry and I will fix it. That's why today I made an official request of the legislature to fund a series of immediate actions to provide everyone in Flint clean water and care for Flint's children. In addition to the $9 million supplemental appropriation for Flint made in October 2015, the request today is for $28 million with $22 million from the general fund. It includes additional bottled water, filters, replacement filters for anyone that needs these resources, assistance to the city of Flint to help with utility-related issues, testing and replacing fixtures in schools, daycare facilities, and other high-risk locations, treatment of children with high lead levels, including diagnostic testing, nurse visits, nutritional counseling, and environmental assessments. Services will be available for the treatment of potential behavioral health issues, such as ADHD, for those who have had or could have had elevated blood lead levels. We'll also work with local primary care providers and hospitals to educate the community about toxic stress and how to de identify developmental delays. Support for children and adolescent health centers and additional support for children's health care access. An infrastructure integrity study for pipes and connections using outside independent experts. And important note, this will not be the last budget request for Flint. Additional resources will be needed for water-related needs, health-related needs, educational needs, economic development needs, and more. I'll fix it. I'll fix it. And by the way, in that clip, in that clip, he also says, he also says, the buck stops with me. Do you know when that clip was, folks? It was in 2016. Do you know? that on April 25th, 2019, it will be five years since the people of Flint had clean water. I know a lot of people say, Jordan, we appreciate you covering this. We appreciate your passion, but you got to cover other things too. And I think we do. I think we cover as many water contamination system, uh, situations as we can. But when you take the cameras off a situation like Flint, or you stop reminding people what this man is responsible for, you normalize it. You know, a lot of people say we can't normalize Donald Trump. You can't normalize people like Rick Snyder. So you want to see whether he fixed the problem? You want to see whether he fixed this problem? Take a guess whether he fixed this problem. We found children like that with ongoing rashes. We have found, I, I spoke with that young infant's ba uh, brother, spoke with him on that porch. He counts 
up to 30. He used to be able to count up to 30. Now he forgets after 14. He used to be able to say the whole alphabet. The kid's five years old. He used to be able to say the whole alphabet. Now he forgets after J. This is happening all over Flint. And as Cheryl says, it's not just Flint. There's water contamination problems in Canada. There's lead problems in other cities in the water. There's uranium mining. It's everywhere. But if this was a wealthy or upper middle class area with mostly white people with money, first of all, probably would have never happened. But more importantly, it would have been fixed up. It would have been fixed in five minutes, not five years. Rick Snyder, the governor of Michigan, who's leaving now, has gone out of his way to avoid having to pay for bottled water for the citizens of Flint. He fought a court order. A court order. A court ordered him and his administration to deliver bottled water home to home. Never did it. He complained to the high heavens that his state government had to pay for free bottled water when his data and his, the numbers they were doing were showing that Flint was lower than the EPA limit, which myself and Jen both broke the story that they cooked up that data. That is what this documentary is about. In addition to the total devastation in Flint, our documentary shows you that they illegally tested dozens of residents' homes and cooked the data. They ran residents' water before putting the sample bottles in, in some cases for 10 to 15 minutes, which is against the EPA's lead and copper rule. In English, they flushed out the lead to get lower numbers, and they then used those lower numbers to declare crisis over to shut down the remaining free water pods and to basically sweep it under the rug. If that's not environmental genocide, I don't know what is. And this governor, he's not going to jail. He's probably, once he leaves office next week, probably become a lobbyist. He'll get appointed to many different board of directors of oil companies, real estate development, pharmaceutical, who knows, maybe all of them. This man was the chief executive of the state of Michigan for eight years. He was the chief executive when decisions were being made to switch Flint to the Flint River in order to privatize. He was the chief ex executive that when hundreds of thousands, uh, tens of thousands of Flint residents were complaining of hair loss, rashes, nosebleeds, cognitive problems, behavioral problems in the kids, he instructed his state officials to pretend it was all in their heads. And for 18 months, do you know how much damage was done in those 18 months that they pretended that there was no problem, there was no problem in the water? Do you know what, how much more damage happened in those 18 months where they continued to let those kids and let those immune system compromised adults drink that water? This is, he is someone who has murdered people. There are people who have died from Legionella in Flint. And there are also, you know, they don't do it, this data, but there are people who got cancer early in life with no family history. No family history. Every time we went to a neighborhood and we knocked on doors, if somebody wouldn't answer, the next person who answered, we'd ask, do you know if anyone still lives there? Do you know how many times we were told, oh, that person just died? Not like 75-year-old people. 
We're talking like people in their 40s, in their 50s. But there's no register. There's no register in Flint or in the state of Michigan that are calculating or categorizing how many people are dying of what. Did they have family history? How long did they drink the water? Nothing. We have no idea how many people have died as a, as a, as a result of this and how many people are essentially the walking dead because I have many, many close contacts in Flint that I, I know a 36-year-old who's got more problems health-wise than anyone I've ever met in my life. I, I walked in because I left my laptop in her house last time. She, she looked like she was a ghost. Her, she was so pale, she was having heart palpitations. 37. I said, do you want me to call an ambulance or drive you to the hospital? She said, no, no, this happens every night. I'm not going to name who, but there's uh, someone I'm very close with, a friend of mine in Flint, 40 years old. can barely get out of bed now. Her bones are basically depleted. She walks in pain. The only thing that's helped slightly is the CBD that I got her. And now, this Mr. Fix-It, who's going to fix it, who, by the way, this Mr. Fix-It, Rick Snyder, has charged the residents of Michigan, if you, listen, if you live in Michigan, pay attention, has charged the residents of Michigan, has charged the residents of Flint with he and his state officials on trial to the almost $30 million. Over 30, almost $30 million of criminal defense costs for lawyers. The taxpayers are paying for their and his criminal defense fund. Essentially, those who are poisoned, those who have been left to die, are being forced to pay for his defense lawyers and his administration officials who have been charged. And by the way, why do you think his administration officials aren't turning on him? Why do you think they're not giving up any information about what Snyder knew, what he directed them to do? Because he's paying for their defense, which would total into the millions of dollars. It's like a mob boss not getting ratted out by the people under him. A, they know that that mob boss will go after their family, but B, that mob boss is paying for their lawyers. This is going on five years. And I agree, there are problems in Canada. There are other, there, you know, I've done interviews on water contamination and poisoning in North Carolina, in East Chicago, in uh, Florida, in Massachusetts. I cover a lot of water issues. I, only don't, I don't only cover Flint. And I understand people who say, like, what about this place? This isn't just about, this is not just about water. That's what you need to understand. This is not just about water. Obviously, that's the most important thing. But it's not only about water. This is about, do we live in a country? Do we live in a country that if you want to give them the benefit of the doubt and say a gross negligent accident happens, that we make the people victimized as whole as possible? These people are never going to be made completely whole. There are children with permanent brain damage, with permanent immune system damage. There are people who have died. People can't be made permanently whole. But I got news for you. If this happened on the Upper West Side of Manhattan, it would have been fixed maybe in five weeks. There would have been reparations to those victimized. These people don't have Medicare for all. There's people drowning in medical debt because the health care that has been extended to them, they've gotten some health care subsidies, doesn't cover environmental doctors. And most of them need specialists. Most regular doctors are not equipped to deal with lead poisoning. And it's not just lead. There's uh, TTHMs in the water that cause cancer. There's uh, PFOA in the water 
that cause cancer? Bacteria in the water? But the media, asleep at the switch, covering Trump 24-7, they don't give a damn. And now, this governor, he won't respond to congressional requests for Flint water documents. Governor Rick Snyder still isn't commenting on a congressional request for additional Flint water crisis documents because he never, quote, officially received the request, the spokesperson says. Are you fucking kidding me? Ari Adler, his director of communications, who, by the way, in Michael Moore's documentary, Ari refused to drink a glass of Flint water that Michael Moore handed to him, made the comment in an email to MLive. In addition to the December 19th letter mailed to Snyder, the correspondence from U.S. Congressman Elijah Cummings, who was also sent to the governor in email form and posted online nine days ago, according to a spokesperson for the congressman. So he's gotten this request for more documents. He is lying. He is trying to run out the clock. He is trying to avoid congressional inquiry because he perjured himself in front of Congress as to when he first knew about the lead issue in Flint. The letter asked Snyder to fully comply with the House Committee on Oversight and Government Reform, previous partisan request for documents, a bipartisan request for documents, excuse me. Cummings' letter says he intends to, quote, continue this Flint water investigation in the next Congress and has previously accused Snyder of having refused to provide key documents to the Oversight Committee. Members of the committee previously requested that the governor provide documents without redactions, as well as detailed descriptions of 130 documents withheld for attorney-client privilege. The new request asks for certification, certification signed by Snyder or his attorney, stating that a diligent search has been completed of all documents in his possession, custody, or control, which reasonably could contain information sought by the committee. Congressional Republicans closed a year-long investigation of the water crisis in December 2016 after hearing testimony Testimony from own, from Snyder, former emergency manager, Darnell Early, blah, 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 blah. So, of course, Republicans weren't going to do anything. But frankly, what did Obama do for Flint? Let's keep it real. What did Obama do for the people of Flint? Nothing. Not a damn thing. Yes, there are class action lawsuits. And trust me, there will be lawsuits against Rick Snyder now that he's becoming a private citizen. This man is obstructing the United States Congress's request for documents. You want to know why he's obstructing the Congress's request for documents? Because they're incriminating of him and his administration. He perjured himself in front of that Congress by saying he didn't know that there was a problem with lead in the water in Flint until January 2016. His own state employee who was in charge of the Flint water crisis, he appointed an individual, I forget his name, to run the, the Flint recovery. That person testified under oath that he had conversations with Governor Snyder months earlier about the problem in Flint. He perjured himself in front of Congress. He lied to the people of Michigan. He lied to the people of Flint. This is not a Democratic or Republican issue. It's not a progressive versus conservative issue. It's not even political. This man is a criminal. He is an accomplice to murder. He needs to be put in jail for the rest of his life.